welcome to this session. We will continue from what we were discussing last time. Last time we were looking at uh, different levels of testing and uh, few basic concepts. So, we will continue with the basic concepts that we were discussing before we look testing in some detail. Last session we started discussing about this very important concept of the pesticide effect. We were saying that there is a good analogy of uh, testing technologies, use of testing technologies with use of pesticide by a farmer. We said that when uh, bugs infest a crop, farmer uses pesticides and bugs get killed, but then the bugs which survive a pesticide develop resistance to the pesticide and the same pesticide is not effective anymore, need other types of pesticides. There is a rough analogy here in uh, testing. As we were saying that there are many testing techniques, there are a dozen black box testing and may be more than two dozen white box testing techniques and also there are other bug removal techniques like review, simulation and so on. And each of these bug removal technique, whether it is a review, simulation, black box testing, white box testing, unit integration, system testing, we can consider all of them as a different type of bug removal filters. So, I have colored these different types of bug removal techniques as different colored filters, meaning that they are effective against some type of bugs. So, just see here initially there were some bugs and then we used a bug detection technique, may be review and then those bugs have got reduced but some have survived and those which have survived a filter further applications of the same filter is not very effective. So, that is what we have written here bugs that escape a fault detection technique cannot be detected by further applications of that technique very very fundamental concept and uh, when we fix the bugs that have been eliminated and when we make other changes to the software, new types of bugs get introduced. So, after each filter some bugs get eliminated, new bugs appear and then we use a different type of filter and then the bugs that survive this filter would not get eliminated by further applications of the same filter, we keep on using new filters or new bug removal techniques. Kappers Jones who is a authority in this area published a landmark paper IEEE computer 1996. He said each of software review inspection and a test step finds about 30 percent of the bugs present. So, 70 percent bugs escape every bug filter that was his observation in IEEE computer 1996. Now, let us do a small problem. Let us assume that um, 1000 bugs are present before we start any bug uh, detection technique and we use four bug detection techniques and each is able to detect 70 percent of the bugs. So, very effective filters removing 70 percent of the bugs and as we observe Kappers Jones saying that only 30 percent of the bugs get filtered by bug detection technique, but here we are considering 70 percent bugs are detected and eliminated after each bug detection technique. So, after we apply all the four techniques, how many bugs will survive assuming that no new bugs are introduced.
to answer this question is not very difficult. We say that thousand was the initial bugs and each time we apply a bug filter 30 percent survive. So, at the final after 4 bug detection techniques have been applied 1000 into 0 0.3 to the power 4 roughly equal to 81 bugs will survive. Now, before we look at further concepts small quiz based on what we have discussed in the last two sessions. We have shown here a waterfall model iterative waterfall model and the question is that in which phases verification activities are undertaken. Okay, verification the answer to this question is that verification is undertaken during requirements analysis, design and coding. All stages verification is undertaken to check whether the confirm to the previous step. And when is testing undertaken in waterfall model? There are two types of testing one done by the programmer himself, the developer, which is unit testing, which is undertaken during coding and unit testing. So, testing is undertaken in coding phase and also integration and system testing takes place in the testing phase. So, both coding phase and testing phase <coughs> testing activities are undertaken. When is validation undertaken? Validation essentially is system testing, where we test the software for conformance to the requirement specification and that is undertaken in the testing phase. Now, let us look at the V life cycle model. The V life cycle model uh, is special for testing. It is a variant of the waterfall model but then it was one of the early models to recognize the importance of carrying out verification and validation throughout the development cycle. So, here the unlike waterfall model in V model testing activities are spread all over the life cycle that is in every phase of development testing is test is planned, the test cases are designed in parallel with development. So, during requirement specification we plan the system testing activities, because system testing as we will see requires only the functional and non functional descriptions of the system and that is available in this requirement specification document. So, as the requirement specification document is developed the system test cases are planned. As the high level design is done the integration testing is planned and as the detailed design is done the unit testing is planned. So, one very prominent advantage is that it spreads the testing activity throughout the life cycle development life cycle and also when we do a development stage we plan out the testing and therefore, the planning of test activity itself makes the artifact testable and leads to good quality artifact to be produced. So, as uh, we are saying the development activity and the corresponding test activity here analysis and specification system and acceptance testing is carried out during design integration testing and during detailed design and coding the unit testing is planned. So, the V model strengths let us uh, we already mentioned that it emphasizes planning and verification. It, 
planning for verification and validation of the software throughout the life cycle, the test activities that is planning and testing spread over the life cycle and each deliverable is made testable, it is intuitive and easy to use. But then the V model being a variant of the waterfall model, it suffers from some of the same shortcomings as the waterfall model itself. For example, it does not support overlapping of the phases. We know that that is a major shortcoming of the waterfall model. There is a clear demarcation between different phases and when one phase stops, the next phase begins. But then in a practical situation, we need overlapping activity of different phases as has been done in recent uh, development methodology such as agile programming. The V model does not support iterations, actually iterative development is uh, one of the very important, it has been recognized as one of the important principles. So, the product, the software is developed over a large number of iterations and each iteration is actually a mini project where specification design coding and testing is carried out. So, testing is there in every iteration, but V model does not support that and because it is not iterative, it uh, does not handle the change requests. So, here initially the requirements are frozen and based on that the development is carried out and therefore, very little scope for changing the requirements. And also there are no explicit mechanism for risk handling like the waterfall model. Now, you saw that the V model actually is a small adaptation of the waterfall model, where the testing is given importance and is spread over entire life cycle. But what kind of software development is V model suitable? Okay, one thing is that the software which require very high reliability, the V model is preferred to be used there and the other characteristics are that we should know the requirements upfront, the requirements should not be likely to change and also the solution should be proven. So, let us say we have one version working and we are just going to develop a newer version. We know that the technology works, the solution works and we are just trying to develop different situation. So, in these cases this is a good model for example, embedded control applications where very high reliability is required and the solution might have already implemented one solution and trying a small variation of that will use the V model. Now, let us look at few more basic concepts in testing before we look at uh, details of test case design, test coverage analysis and so on. Now, one interesting question that is often raised is that uh, suppose a software is developed using the available processes reviews are carried out, available testing techniques are carried out and after that how many bugs survive and the version that is delivered to the user, how many do the bugs are present there. Some studies they in they conclude that about 85 percent of the bugs are removed, so, leave in the code when they are handed over to the customer. But then why is it that we are not able to remove more than 85 percent, can not we remove 100 percent? The answer is that it is very difficult, becomes extremely expensive to remove much more defects than 85 percent, 
because we would have to use many more filters and each filter or bug detection technique is actually a heuristic. The only way 100 percent bugs can be removed is by trying out all possible test inputs and for practical situations the test inputs are infinite and therefore, guaranteeing removal of 100 percent bugs is not possible and in a realistic situation about 85 percent bugs have been removed and uh, as uh, it is used by the customers and uh, these are bugs are reported more bugs get removed, but then bugs also are introduced due to the changes. So, we will look at those aspects later. As we were saying that last 30, 40 years, we have more and more automated tools that have become available. As uh, you can see in this diagram, till about 1990s, the test case design and execution was very well manual, just keep on giving random inputs and possibly look at what is the coverage achieved and then the tester uses discretion to check whether it is a pass or fail and uh, basically till about 90s the testing was more or less manual, but then after 1990s slowly test tools started to appear and one of the tools is capture and replay. Capture and replay to es uh, tools essentially do not uh, really generate test cases or do automatic testing in that sense, but then as the user sorry as the tester inputs the test cases they capture the test cases the sorry they capture the input. As the tester inputs the test data the tool here the capture and replay tool captures the test input and also captures the result. And next time the test has to be executed it just replays that. So, it just captures the testers test input and later just replays. So, it does not really help design test cases or does not decide whether the test execution is right or wrong. It basically the tester has to first time design the test cases and also decide whether it is a pass or fail and based on that the test tool captures the test input and also can judge whether if another time it is played whether it is a pass or fail. But then this is a big help the capture and replay tools are a big help in testing. Can I ask why, why these are big help in testing? Because it appears that the tester has to anyway design test cases, input them, judge whether it is pass or fail. So, how does the capture and replay tool help in testing? Okay, to answer this question, in a typical software development scenario, the same test case is executed hundreds or thousands of times. Why is that? That is due to the regression. So, once some test cases have passed and we change something to the software, we need to run those test cases which have passed just to check that still those parts of the software are working all right. So, capture and the there is another category of tools called a scripting tools. In the scripting tool, the test cases are actually small programs. The tester takes time to really write the test cases as programs. So, these small scripts they run and test the software and uh, these have some advantages over the capture and replay in the sense that the scripting test cases are much more reusable. In a capture and replay, if a feature 
or let us say one of the input just changed little bit, the entire test case becomes useless and has to be thrown out, whereas the script with a small change the same test case can run. So, the scripting based tools these are much more reusable test cases, they produce much more reusable test cases even though initially they take more time to write the scripts. So, these are the two major categories of testing tools, the scripting based tools and the capture and replay tools which evolved in the 1990 and 2000 and slowly we have more and more tools which are appearing. For example, the model based testing tools based on certain program model like control flow graph, dependency graph and so on, uh, we will try to see these tools uh, later in this uh, course, but uh, scripting and capture and replay tools we will look at them first, first and other tools later. Now, another basic concept that we want to discuss is the fault model. Actually, when a program is developed, there are certain types of faults that get introduced. So, let me repeat that word that there are certain types of faults that get introduced. For example, one type of fault may be algorithmic fault. The programmer misunderstood the algorithm and his code was syntactically correct and also possibly the code was what really he wanted to do, but then he had misunderstood the algorithm. Maybe the sorting algorithm it does not sort properly some parts of the input space. Another type of bug may be programming bug, where uh, let us say the programmer uh, interchanges some variables. Instead of using i at some expression, he used some k or maybe his loop conditionals were not properly formed and so on. So, we can imagine that there are certain types of faults and the number of types can be also very large, because a programmer can do many types of mistakes while writing code, but this concept is very important that there are different types of faults that can be introduced by the programmer. Now, depending on the kind of program certain kinds of faults can be ruled out. For example, if the program does not use any files, the file related problems can be ruled out. If it does not use network communication, network communication related problems can be ruled out and so on. So, if we roughly look at a high level categorization of the types of faults, we will say that there are structural faults. In the structural faults we might have traceability fault that is while the programmer was coding the design just misunderstood the design, maybe left out some part of the design or misunderstood some design, those are traceability faults and so on. And similarly, we have algorithmic faults, where we might have incorrect result, wrong implementation of the algorithm or may be inadequate performance and so on and we can sub categorize. But uh, one thing to notice is that in contrast to software, where the number of types of bugs, the diff number of types of bugs is very large tens of thousands, it is very small category of faults, very small number of types of faults. Essentially, there are only four types, stock at 0, stock at 1, open circuit, short circuit. And therefore, hardware testing is much more simpler task than software testing because in software you are trying to eliminate el bugs that can be of various types, large number of times, whereas in hardware we know that there can be four or five categories of bugs and for each category of bug we can 
design effective testing. For example, in hardware there are tests to check whether there is a stock at 0 problem or a stock at 1 problem. So, hardware testing is usually fault based testing whereas, uh, we uh, where we check the existence of certain types of problems. On the other hand, on the other hand in software each test case can detect several types of faults and we do not really we cannot really design test cases which will try to discover a specific type of fault. In that case we will need large number of test cases. So, here the test cases most of the test cases here in software we will see they are designed irrespective of the bug category and they might detect different types of bugs, but then there are few test cases also few test strategies where which are fault based we will look at those as we proceed. So, there are few other basic concepts a test case and a test suit. A test case is basically a set of test data and a state at which the test data is to be applied and what result is to be ob observed. So, let me just repeat that that uh, a test case typically tries to check the correct working of functionality and as we execute it covers some program elements. The program element can be a statement, it can be a specific condition in a for loop or maybe a while loop or maybe a if. So, checking for a condition, checking for a statement and so on. And we check whether the required types of elements in the program are covered. So, that is our testing criterion we check whether the elements that we are targeting whether it is statements or conditions these are all covered. But then as I was mentioning that we have a few fault based techniques as well. So, we will just uh, stop this session and uh, continue our discussion in the next session. Thank you.